the Free Peak Challenge is a UK-based mountain climbing challenge whereby participants take it upon themselves to climb the three highest peaks in the UK. Ben Nevis in Scotland, which stands at an incredible 1,345 metres or 4,413 feet. Scaffell Pike in England, which has a height of 978 metres or 3,208 feet. And Snowdon in Wales, which stands at an impressive 1,085 metres or 3,560 feet. To put this all into perspective, the Shard in London only stands at 300 metres high or 985 feet. So let's meet the team that are taking on this three peak challenge. First up is our leader, Jason Sherpa Savage. He has multiple climbs already to his name and has plenty of experience. He's in charge of logistics, timings, planning, organizing, safety, and basically everything. There is no one better to lead the group. Next, we have laid back Luke. He has multiple climbs already to his name, just not Ben Nevis. His laid back and chilled attitude will be a great help to the team, especially for all the novices. Next is Slow Down Tony. He has some experience already with a couple of the peaks, a fantastic motivator and team player. But he's also renowned for setting a quick pace. That's why his nickname is Slow Down Tony. Next we have Ryan, a complete novice at mountain climbing, but eager and willing. His fitness and determination will be fully tested. But he's got youthfulness on his side. Then we have Andy, not sure his age is quite correct here, but again, a complete novice at mountain climbing. The beer aisle with Tesco is the only thing he normally walks up. His sense of humour will be key to the team and he's got a heart of a lion. Next we have Rue. Now don't let her size fool you. What she lacks in height, she makes up for in determination and drive. She'll be an inspiration for the whole team. Then we have Jenny from the block. Again, no previous mountain experience. She is one tough cookie. She would give anyone a run for their money. Her mental strength is amazing. And then there's finally me, Phil. I'll be doing the majority of filming on this trip and I have zero mountain experience. I'll be looking at the others to help me up. As the oldest member of the team, if I don't make it, that's gonna be my excuse. Let's get everything packed up because we've got a 10 hour drive from our starting point to Ben Nevis in Scotland. There's nothing quite like an early start. Here we go, Luton to Fort Williams in Scotland. So we had made it to Fort Williams in Scotland, which is about two miles away from Ben Nevis, and we had to rehydrate ourselves by going for a couple of pints. The locals even put a show on for us. But we couldn't stay out too late, we had to be up nice and early to start our climb. So another nice early start, 
We'd be taking the mountain trek up Ben Nevis, starts at the visitor centre and goes for just over five miles all the way to the summit. We'd be setting off at 4.30 in the morning and just like my camera's focus, we were all a little bit blurry eyed. Good morning people, welcome to Ben Nevis. Morning all. Love you, babe, and your kids. Peak one of three out of three days. Don't see me. <laughs> Gonna smash it. Morning, let's do this. Peak one. Morning all. <laughs> Hi. One day fridge. Right, here we go. Let's do this. Top effort, Ruth. Thank you. I wanna thank you for the way you taught me safety, the way you showed me all the ropes and how to make it, how to make it on my own, and how to tame my dream, how to tame my dream. It began easy enough. The first half a mile was just a gentle rise, enough just to get your legs warmed up. But then as we began to hug the side of the mountain, the enormity of the challenge was realised. When I said four hours up, four hours down, I think I mean like six up. What started as a gentle rise soon began to change into steep rocky steps, and this is where the legs really started to get tested. Every time I've struck an out, but I keep showing up and now there is no doubt that I belong here. I made my way from Tennessee, thinking why not me? Oh, why not me? Every word you said became the, the steepness and sheer scale of the mountain was starting to become apparent. It was unrelenting. This is where the mountain starts to break you, with the burn in your legs ramping up as the steepness increases. The track was getting steeper and steeper and seemed never ending. You would turn a corner only to see the track disappear upwards and into the distance as far as your eye could see. To say us newcomers had underestimated the challenge was an understatement. It was like nothing we had experienced before. Thankfully, as a team, we stuck together, helping each other where needed. This is where team members with previous experience really paid off. They reassured us newcomers that we could push on and make it to the summit. Without them, I'm pretty sure some of us would have turned back. Thank you for I care. Somehow we had managed to make it halfway up, but the mood had changed. It had gone from optimism to doubt. What started as a bit of a laugh had turned into a seriously hard challenge. Reality had really started to kick in. The first half of the climb had made us all realise just how difficult a challenge this was. I began to see why so many people fail to make the summit and why people get into difficulty. Some even die on this mountain. It's a serious challenge that so many people take for granted. The second half of the climb was only going to get harder, with the train now changing to loose rocks and boulders, making every step more and more precarious. Our speed, which had already slowed, had now turned into a snail's pace, with rest breaks every 15 minutes. We were way behind schedule, but battle on we did.
It had turned from making it in a respectable time to can we actually make the summit at all. This wasn't a race and every step was just one step closer to the summit. And that's how it changes terrain. <laughs> yeah. With every step, you had to be sure the terrain was stable. You didn't want to twist your ankle going over on a loose rock. One of the hardest parts for me mentally was not being able to see the summit and not knowing how far was left to go. The summit is over the crest of the mountain, which means it's out of view, and with no idea how far away you are, it just seems to be a never-ending walk. The track just keeps going and going. Luckily, our Sherpa, Jason, was still in high spirits and motivating everybody to the top. It was becoming a real slog at this point, and as you go further up the mountain, the more people were turning round and headed back down. Then as we took one corner on the track, the path seemed to level out slightly, and up ahead we could see snow in the distance. We were nearing the top. Seeing the snow and knowing we was probably only 20 minutes away from the summit gave everybody a boost. We were literally floating on cloud nine. Someone just goes not far to go now. Yeah, right. It was just the boost we needed. Morale was picking back up again. Even though I'd watched countless videos on Ben Nevis, none of them put the scale or steepness into perspective. Clouds began to roll over the top of the mountain, meaning that visibility was down to only about 50 meters. But then in the distance, a beacon. Was that really the summit? And just like that, the clouds parted and we could finally see the summit. We had made it. Just one final push past this guy that decided he wanted to camp at the top of the mountain and we had finally done it. Six hours to the top of Ben Nevis. Yes. Yes. Well done. I remember sitting back from the group and just reflecting on the achievement we had just completed. I remember being so proud of everyone that had made it. God knows how we'd done it, it was a lot harder than anybody could have ever thought. I remember sitting there and telling Jason we'd done it, and he reminded me that we was actually only halfway and that going down was twice as hard. I was a bit bamboozled by this and he said just wait and see, and I wish I would have heeded his warning. But for now we celebrated our achievement. Success, peak one of three done. Let's go. We did it. One down, three to go, two to go. My maths is off a bit. <laughs> ben Nevis, completed it, mate. Top of Nevis, smashed it. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, the okay. Smashed it. Good. Ben Nevis, completed. On to the next one. So we made it to the summit of Ben Nevis. Now all we had to do was get back down. How hard could it be? So there we was, we was at the top of Ben Nevis and we just reached the summit in a time of six hours, which is quite slow. We managed to do it as a team, but the words of Jason were still ringing in my head about how it's twice as hard coming down as it is coming up. 
And that was worrying me for a little bit, you know, I wonder what, surely it's easy coming down the mountain than it is going up. But 25 minutes later, I was about to learn from his words. What had happened was I stepped off a 12 inch boulder and as I put all my weight on my left knee, the most amount of pain shot up my leg. And it was excruciating pain. It felt like someone was sticking a dagger in between my kneecap and my shin bone. Every step after that, my left knee was in absolute agony. And about 200 meters further on, the right knee went as well. I pulled over to the side, waited for the group, looked at the group, Andy was in trouble with both his legs. Rue was in trouble with both her legs. Tony, his knees are gone, and probably the worst was Ryan. Both his knees are gone and one of his ankles. And for the next five hours coming down that mountain, all of us was in absolute pain coming off that mountain. The biggest problem was, whilst the climb up was physically exhausting, coming back down was physically painful. The weight you're putting onto your joints is multiplied. Every joint is having to take sustained punishment as well as the additional weight you are carrying. Once one of the joints goes, there is no recovering from it. You have to continue knowing that it's only going to get worse. And that is something a lot of people overlook. If your boots don't fit correctly, if your underwear chafes, if your socks gives you blisters, if you've got a bad back, if you've got a dodgy hip, this mountain will find it and make sure you're aware of it twice over. Any weaknesses you have, the mountain will expose it. I was so physically tired from the climb up and in so much pain coming down, any thoughts of recording any video had gone out the window. I can quite happily say this was the most sustained pain I'd ever suffered in my life. Somehow though, we all managed to get down. I suppose it's because we didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that tastes fucking good. Now, Lovely. Her, We had completed Ben Nevis, but now it meant a five hour night drive to get to our next location. We had made it to our hostel just before midnight, and the main concern was who would be able to climb the next morning. I expected a lot of the team to drop out. The next morning we were greeted to some of the most amazing views we had ever seen. It was decided though that due to Rue's legs being so badly injured, that the two ladies would miss out climbing Scaffell Pike. They would go ahead onto Snowden and meet the team there. To my amazement, Andy, Tony and Ryan, even though being in serious pain, were willing to give Scaffell Pike a go. I must admit, I was willing to drop out, but seeing that the team was so determined, I too set my mind to trying to climb it. So on a breakfast of painkillers, knee supports, humour and stupidity, we headed off to climb Scaffell Pike. Due to arriving late in the night at our second hostel, we decided not to set off until we were all fully awake. The hostel was about one hour drive from the mountain, which gave us all time to contemplate how our legs were feeling and to take in some of the stunning scenery. Even though we left the hostel in good spirits and fully motivated, I fully expected at least three of us not to make the summit of Scaffell Pike. I was convinced that the knee injuries were only going to get worse and a couple of us would have to drop out before we'd even started. Tony, who had already climbed Scaffell Pike, said it was a really brutal climb and they had already broken him once. Day two, peak two, Scaffell Pike. Scaffell Pike, take two. You ain't getting me this time, motherfucker. 
Number two, here we go. Scarf up, let's do it. Scaffold Pike, let's smash it. The temperature for the climb at Ben Nevis had been about 15 degrees, and the higher you went up the mountain, the colder it got. The temperature as we set off for Scarfell Pike was already in the low 20s and only going to get hotter throughout the day. I was praying that as we got closer to the summit, it was going to cool down. We would be taking the corridor route up Scarfell Pike which starts in Seathwaite and follows the mountain line up through the valley, climbing the side of the mountain face as you go. You're then left with a mile of extreme steepness at the end to reach the summit. Thankfully, the first mile of the trek was pretty much flat, which means we could stretch our knees a bit. The level ground though wasn't going to last long and up ahead was 500 meters of extremely steep rocky steps that again got them legs really burning up. This steep initial climb seemed to help my knee a lot. Whilst there was a little pain there, it numbed it down. It seemed to benefit from the stretching I was putting through it. It wasn't putting any load damage through it anymore. The only problem was I was wary that at any moment my knee could go and I was keeping an eye on the other guys, making sure they were okay too. As we finished that initial climb, in the distance, the summit come into view. This for me was a massive benefit. You knew where you was heading and where your finish line was. Considering the amount of injuries we all had, the pace was really good. And I noticed that Andy was well impressed with this guy's tight shorts. I put the pace down to Tony. He was marching, always out in front. He needed to slow down a bit. We had reached the halfway point in good time and the trek for me up to this point had been a lot easier than that of Ben Nevis. But as we started the second half of the climb, the terrain would get more challenging and more physical. Oh. Even though we were a team, everyone was facing their own physical and mental battles. Everyone was competing with their own selves, their weaknesses, their demons, their strengths, and making sure they were there for the whole team. We then entered the most dangerous part of the climb. So far it had just been steep trekking, but now we had to traverse down the side of a 15 foot cliff, which with one false move could see you at the bottom of a 100 foot waterfall. Luckily, Sherpa Savage and laid back Luke were on hand to help us novices down.
the hardest aspect wasn't the steep mountain faces or the trek itself. It was trying to stay hydrated in 25 plus degrees of heat. I was going through water at a rate of knots. Just like Ben Nevis, the train was starting to change from compact hard rock into loose boulders and gravel. We were nearly at the start of the last one mile of steep ascending to the summit. As we entered the last mile of the climb, the mountain became really crowded as multiple paths merged into one. Being one of the hottest days of the year and at the weekend meant that every man and his dog seemed to be trying to reach the summit. The summit was in view, but you couldn't take your eyes off the floor just in case you twisted your ankle. Finally, after four hours of trekking, we had made it to the top of Scarfell Pike. The second peak had been conquered. We had made it to the top of Scarfell Pike in a really good time and at a really good pace. Everybody was motivated, but the hard bit was yet to come. We had to get back down. So we just reached the summit of Scarfell Pike and now all we had to do was get back down without injuring ourselves. A lot easier said than done remembering Ben Nevis. We started off and everybody seemed fine, then about 400 meters from the summit, Tony's knees both went and he was in absolute pain. Uh, another half a mile from that, I looked round and Andy was in trouble and so was Ryan. Everybody's knees or legs were starting to go. Luckily, my left knee, even though it was in a bit of pain, was managing to hold out just about. Jason was also suffering with a little pain in his thighs, but this was just muscular and not joint pain. He was going to make it down. We got about halfway down and all of a sudden my left knee went again. Exactly the same as Ben Nevis. Absolutely shooting pain up my leg. It felt like, again, like someone was sticking a dagger in between my kneecap and my shin bone. And there's nothing you can do about it. Once your joint goes, there's no recovery from it, you just got to plod on and keep marching on until you get to the bottom of the mountain. Where we had damaged our joints from coming down Ben Nevis and not giving them chance to recover, all we was doing is putting injuries on top of old injuries. How Andy, Ryan and Tony was able to carry on down that mountain, I still have no idea. Whilst I was in pain, the three of them had been carrying their injuries from pretty much the top of the mountain and were all in a bad way. Many a lesser person would have stopped or quit. Where's that now? Two out of two. Two out of two, what? There was one saving grace though that Jason had told us about. At the bottom of the mountain was a plunge pool where rainwater and melted snow from the tops of mountains run down into a stream and forms a free ice bath perfect for sore joints. Everyone just wanted to make it to the free ice pool. Somehow we had all made it.
That's it. We are down. Game over. Um, we got to smash it. Easy as hell. down. Pissed it. Smashed it. Pissed well done. Smashed it. Scarfell Pike, peak number two, done. <laughs> Completed Scarfell today. Fucking knackered, but got that done. <laughs> Scarfell, we came and we fucking smashed you. Lovely. Scarfell fucked me, but I fucked it. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Tony can't get up. Peak two, done. On to the next one. Oh, really? And this is how fucked Tony is. <laughs> Scarfell did fuck me. <laughs> So, another four hour night drive. We weren't going to get to the hostel again until midnight. We was greeted first thing in the morning with torrential rain. Oh, and Jenny. She'd decided to join us on this one. Unfortunately, Rue, with her injuries, would have to sit out of this one. It's snowed in, it's pissing down, but it's the last one. I'm going to make it. Get home, Snowden, peak three. Peak two for me. Peak three, Snowden, let's do it. It's pissing down. Day three, peak three, day of hell. Let's go. Snowden, you're getting smashed. Let's go do this. We would be taking the pig track up to the top of Snowden. Now it's a little bit quicker than the normal route, but a little bit more steeper and riskier. The mood on this climb had changed. Where on the other mountains we wanted to take it all in, the scenery, the scale, the environment. This one was just an obstacle in our way that had to be overcome as quickly as possible. Everyone was tired and in some form of pain. That feels like my calf at the minute. The quicker we got up, the quicker we docked down, the quicker we could go home. Here comes the soldiers. Come on Tank, we got this. The weather was absolutely terrible with wind and rain not easing up. But I'd been keeping a secret from the group that I'd found out the night before. Just 36 hours prior to us climbing Snowdon, a young lady had fallen to her death on the mountain. I chose not to tell the group as I didn't feel it would help the team. And the last thing anyone needed was added pressure or negative thoughts. Any bad news at this time might make any one of them quit. Boys all right or do they need a rest? The rain was lashing it down, making the rocks extremely slippery. At times you are forced to use your hands and legs to climb up the track. Yeah, right, Tony, we got this. Even though the pig track was well defined, it was probably the steepest start to any of the three mountains. The first mile and a half of walking was brutal. Already up quite a way. What's that? Already up quite a way. Yeah, no, yeah, now we just go along.
Once we had crested over the first rise, the track levelled out more. Not that it was flat, but just less steep. The train was still tricky though at times, with clearly laid paths, then to rocks, then boulders, then to dirt, and then back again. Snowdon as a mountain used to be mined, and it shows. The pig track looked like an old mining track. You can imagine old workers going up there with their pickaxes. At times the track felt really unsafe, with sheer drops to the side. It was definitely the most nervous I had felt on any of the climbs. Luckily the more experienced team members were there to reassure everyone. The way the camera makes the track look flat is mind boggling. It distorts how steep it really was. But don't let it fool you, this was a tricky and at times risky climb. I think had I climbed this on my own without this team of people, I definitely would have turned back. I can remember my knee going about halfway up, with the pain again shooting up my left leg. It was the first time on a climb up that my knee had gone. I was really worried. Everybody else seemed to be doing okay while hiding their pain really well. I was worried that my knee had gone on the way up and would I even be able to make it back down again. With the rain lashing down and the wind, the climb was getting tougher and tougher. This was by far the most mentally challenging climb of the three mountains. But finally, through the cloud, we saw the summit and it was a lot closer than I had thought. You just got fucking smashed. Three peaks dominated. Fuck off. <laughs> Bit wet and wonderful, but we made it. Three peaks in three days. Success. Go on, Tony. Now we've got the pain going down. Three peaks in three days. Smashed it, smashed me, but I'm fucking fucked. <laughs> <laughs> you got me three days and I'm still fucked. <laughs> <laughs> smash no, you didn't smash me, three picks done, let's do it. Now we've got the pain on the way down with the knees. Let's go do it. Up and now there is no doubt that I belong here. I made my way from Tennessee, thinking why not me? Why not me?
I've heard your advice Always have a backup Don't get lost in the lights But I'd rather go crashing Than never take the leap So thank you for doubting You put the fire in me Boy, you gotta come down